Guess what? We are going on an adventure today. I'm not intentionally trying to do this. He's holding on to me and I don't want to pull my hand without like scratching it so hard. It's kind of a new mutation. I've never really seen one before. Oh, and this is not fun right here. Uh, how's that? Don't let her roll up. Okay. Yeah, cool. no, I got it. That made my day. This man is working his butt off on a daily basis. <laughs> harder, harder than anybody I've ever seen in my well, life. I appreciate it. It's really the most rare room in all of Herpiculture. Yeah. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. It's the start of an absolutely amazing day, and guess what? We are going on an adventure today. And that adventure is actually including Andrea, Bruce, Jessica, and Jay back there. We are actually heading down to Indianapolis to my buddy Forrest. Gonna go check out some really cool animals. Should be a fun time. It's a beautiful day to travel. Let's just have a good time. I think we have about four and a half hours. We made it down to Forest here in Indianapolis. What basically is going on is Tinley Park, the big reptile expo is this weekend, and Forest every year has a barbecue where he invites a bunch of people over. So uh, this is the first time we've come down here for this. So a bunch of people are gonna be rolling through, gonna have a bunch of animals. Got Steve over here, what's going on? Forrest over here, what's going on? What's up, uh, cool like Lars is sleeping over here. So we're gonna have a great time here, look at a bunch of cool animals, and uh, see who else shows up. It's uh, definitely gonna be a fun day. Super excited, we're actually taking out a croc monitor, one of your guys' dream oh animals, God. right? You guys, this is day one. That's awesome, and uh, Steven actually has a little baby croc monitor here. Of course, we won't get the big one and the baby one too close together, but look at how absolutely adorable these are. I'm telling you what, these are like next level, next level intelligence, so uh, super cool. We're gonna get out a two-year-old? Yeah, two about two, yeah. About two years old, so gonna get out, and her name is Hilo? Kilo. Kilo. So her name is Kilo, so uh, let's go ahead and let four uh, work his magic. All right, so let's get uh, Kilo out. I always like to uh, let this get under there. there and it's literally like a raptor from Jurassic Park. Yeah, that's how I feel every time. It took a long time to get enough trust to be able to touch her back and do those things that make her nervous. I've been really excited to show this to uh, Bruce because I think Bruce is like the new monitor, the new monitor whisperer. And him and Jessica do incredible work. So Forrest, tell me a little bit about Kilo. Kilo was the first baby crocodile monitor that I got. Captive hatched absolutely out of the egg within the past month. That's something that outside of zoo hatched animals, which there's only been a few zoos that have done it, being able to get animals that small is, is a rarity, especially you know from this beautiful locality. I got these from my friend Joe Sitowski. This was the first one. It was his personal animal that he was gonna keep. And uh, it was just incredible. I mean, right off the bat, you know, was able to socialize it, interact with it every day. For me, they're the ultimate reptile. Oh my gosh. They, they mean, really are. It's it like, literally is it's like a, a raptor. That's yeah. what I thought when I seen it in the bag the first time. I was like, this is a dinosaur. Like, it's unbelievable. I mean, Bruce, the way it looks at you is crazy, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like trying to figure everything out. What an absolutely oh, wow. he stunning. Does some crazy claws. That's claws and like, 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 I'm not intentionally trying to do this. He's holding on to me, and I don't want to pull my hand without like scratching it so hard. Just the way those animals' eyes look at you, it's a completely she, different kind of, thing. It's crazy. It does get nervous. Yeah. Um, and she'll. But she's okay around head. Yeah. Like yeah. I've. You know, that's how. I work with them as babies. Is I try to you know do those things that make them a little nervous. When you were doing this like uh, like initially. Like how many times you had to deal with bites and like really bad like those were those really bad situations where you just didn't expect anything to happen. So I told Joe to only give me one if it had never bitten him. Okay. And some of the tests I told him to do was uh, let the thing run away and grab its tail. Yeah, yeah. Pick it okay. out by its tail and uh, also like bump the side of its face and stuff like that. So he did that and. He's like, this one's as tame as it gets. And, oh my gosh, so, so it went through a selective process. Yeah, yeah, okay. to me, like those behaviors I've noticed, like with the new baby that Jessica's holding. You came here for the unboxing of the second, yep. and then this is the third. This is the third. Jessica, and, uh, it's so adorable, yeah. and it's so much softer than you would expect it to be too, yeah. You can literally see it in his eyes. Like, it's just it's see. just a curiosity. It's not even scared, there's no anxiety there. It's insane. It's just working things out. Yeah, just like, just figuring out like, how do I get up higher? You know, the research I've done, on reptile intelligence and you know the different factors they take into account in judging that 
uh, crocodile monitors are the smartest reptile. I know you want one now. I right? do. Oh, oh no. Worse. <laughs> I know. We should just get one at the shop though, so I don't have to like deal yeah, with yeah, one at my house. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll have to get one for the reptile. We'll have to see how it goes, but wow. So Steven, um, yeah. I was gonna film some stuff with this reptile guys, but oh, really? Thor yeah, said that yeah. it wasn't a good idea, so Maybe hmm. later without him knowing that we can check them out. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Don't tell. Okay. There's different philosophies in, in monitor handling. Some people are against handling adult monitors in captivity, and I don't really understand that because I want to be able to safely work with them like you guys do. I like to get them used to those things that would cause them to have a bite response or flee and things like that. Touching them on the side of the face on accident. Yeah. You basically want to desensitize yeah. them from everything yeah. so there's no accidents down the road. Exactly, because it's, it's just so scary to think about if somebody bumps Kilo on the side of her face and she you know, has a bite response with that. I wanted actual babies, you know. People will mark an animal that's you know, wild caught that's a few months old as, as something like this. I, you couldn't give me one of those and these are worth just whatever somebody wants. Yeah, they're, yep because they're, they're totally different, you know? Not that somebody skilled like this guy right here can't take an animal that's super aggressive and dangerous, you know? I mean, what he did with the uh, with the Black Nile, I think is the, the most impressive turnaround I've seen, so. That's why it's cool to be able to hang yeah. out and show well, him. Well, he's oh loving it. I couldn't heaven. be in a better place right now, yeah. man. And just to give you guys an idea, I mean, Kilo is just hanging on, just kind of running around and look at Bruce's arms. And of course, Forrest always has a perpetual yeah. cut of arms. Yeah. I mean, that's just part of it. Are you okay, Jessica? Yeah. It's uh, so it's so important to keep these guys desensitized to people handling because even with them being super tame, they're still going to give you a good scratch and everything like that. But oh my gosh, what an amazing animal but look at Bruce's arms, like, uh, no, not like for the faint of heart, that's for sure. You guys know I love alligators, and actually Forrest has 10 species of crocodilian. There aren't a lot of private places that have 10 species, that's for sure. But this is a little hypo-American alligator. It's kind of a new mutation. I've never really seen one before. Don't know what it's gonna look like as an adult, but when this thing is eight or 10 foot, it's gonna be an absolute ripper. Oh, and this is not fun right oh, here. How's that? Is this bite number two? No, it's, today? oh. This is not very fun. It's actually my first tree monitor bite. So it's your uh, first tree monitor? Yeah, I've been uh, working on it for a while now, but I have not try gotten a chance to, to experience this yet. Yeah, you want to get that off your finger. Oh. Don't let her roll up. Okay. Yeah, cool. no, I got it. That made my day right there. That's, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. It's, oh my gosh. They're truly one of the more painful bites really? I've taken. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, that wasn't, wasn't fun. Yeah, it oh, wasn't you're, fun. You're leaking, dude. A little bit, yeah. yeah it's oh not the gosh. first time today. There's a little DNA on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is, uh, is when you don't have time, and that's yeah. what happened last time. I was getting it to take it to a show for yeah. a display, and uh, same thing happened. So these are these are Varanus prosinus, the green tree monitor or emerald tree monitor. They're the most widespread, most common species of tree monitor. The reason I wanted to pull both these out, though, is to show this difference in color. You can see this one right here has a turquoise blue color versus this one that has more of what you would expect to see. When I got it, I started labeling them as turquoise phase green tree monitors. After that, I seen some people starting to sell them for more money than Aww. these. One of my friends who, they know a lot about nutrition and supplements and all that stuff. What I learned was it's the same thing as a bronia gramenia. So in captivity, it, there's something about the diet that can cause them to uh, look more bluish like that. And it's the same thing with yellow tree monitors. The captive ones don't have high yellow. Right. They almost look green. So. I just thought it was a cool fact mm -hmm. to show. All right, guys, I'm with Steven. He is, of course, Forrest's right-hand man. Mm -hmm. And uh, you brought your amazing python collection when he came down here to work with Forrest. So, yep. uh, and you really, I mean, you do a lot of really great python stuff, but uh, the scrubbies are kind of your thing, right? Yeah, I love them so much. I've always been fascinated by pythons in particular. You know, just learning about all the new species, keeping new ones. You know, I started off uh, working with olive pythons when I was 13 years old and fascinated me learning about like white lips, timors, and scrubs were kind of like, the highest level you can get with rare pythons as far as like difficulty to work with and uh, you know their breeding is very challenging um, uh, there's still very little known about it and once I got my first one I, I was just hooked what do you got here dude because this thing is ridiculous yeah, this man is kind of the, the grand finale this is a uh, Moluccan scrub python or Moluccan scrub python however you want to pronounce it uh, this is the third species that I have here this snake every time I look at it just blows my mind that insane gold coloration the purple on the tail I don't know in my opinion That's... this is the nicest looking naturally occurring snake in the world it really is one of legitimately one yeah. of the most beautiful snakes I've ever seen so uh, I hope that you'll be able to raise these up and breed them sometime that's the hope uh, wishing you luck with everything thank you. absolutely keep at it brother yep thank you very right, much. thanks man
again, I always talk to you guys, when I come down to Forrest's place, it's just amazing how many animals are here. So I can't really show you everything, but look at this amazing emerald tree ball right here. He's got the craziest emerald tree boas, green tree pythons, monitor lizards, uh, a bunch of crocodilians. I mean, it's amazing. I've always loved emerald tree boas, and this one's a ripper. And speaking of emerald tree boas, this up here is a gorgeous animal. This is actually what they call Miss Willie line. It's unbelievable. I mean, they're just the white and the color in this animal. Absolutely incredible. I love emerald tree boas. They're one of my favorite snakes of all time. And again, it's cool to see an animal as awesome and kind of iconic as this particular bloodline is. Hey, where'd you get that lens at? I know, you like that? You like this lens? But you, look at my little- you in Canada? Yeah. I, I, Okay, let's uh, let's change the topic. Uh, all right, so so guys, the thing I love about this event is I get to see all my really good friends. Of course, Brian, my boy here. All it's I been want a long time. Oh, it's been a long time. I'm gonna put a link in the description to his channel, and then I was super surprised to see Brian Gundy, who I'm gonna also put a link in the description. You guys want to check these guys out? Uh, dear, dear friends of mine. I just want to thank you guys real quick for giving this man all the support he deserves because this man works harder than you guys could ever imagine. I mean, nah. on the camera you see how much fun he's having he's showing off the animals but behind the camera this man is working his butt off on a daily basis <laughs> harder, believe it. harder than anybody I've ever seen in my well, life listen, I appreciate you, you man I appreciate you it's not work if you love it and I absolutely love it so I appreciate you guys hanging out with these guys uh Brian 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 uh, I, I love it, man. I tell you what, this is this is this made my day. This event, I needed this. You don't. I can't even express to you how much I need this event. So this is awesome. I absolutely love this room. Of course, this is uh, for us a Bronia room, probably one of the really the most rare room in all of herpetoculture, if you ask me. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's up there. I mean these are some of the rarest lizards in the world, and we've managed to you know get anything we could from anybody here in the USA to grab every species we can and try to preserve and, and have a place where we can learn about these animals and establish captive breeding colonies. And you've done really well with production. Yeah, this year's this year was really good. We produced uh, several species this year. They're not easy to breed. Babies are really difficult to take care of. They're very sensitive to volatility and temperatures. It's very difficult to give them the right size cage where they. They can find their food that's right. another problem yeah. and then hydration is a problem because they're so small you want the sphagnum to get damp but if it's too damp then it's too cold so you're just fighting all these factors that make it very challenging and so. this room is much cooler than your other reptile room about yeah. what temperature do you keep this because uh, these are I, from the cloud forest right? yeah they're from the cloud forest so i prefer to keep it at the hottest time of the year low 70s wow and then the coldest we've let it get in the winter uh is 40. Wow. Yeah, so we've Holy taken them cow. down to 40 degrees. Yeah, you don't think yeah. of reptiles living at 40 to 70 degrees. Yeah. That's pretty insane. But uh, what do we have here? So this is a calico phased Abronia lythrochyla, and uh, this is a really extreme version. This is definitely like people's, you know, the ones that are the most eye-catching. Uh, so that's why I'm showing them first. They're not particularly rare, but still a really cool species that kind of catch people's interest and make them want to learn more about Abronia. This is actually an Amazon Basin Emerald Tree Boa, just a different locality of animal that is unbelievable. They have this really wide white stripe down them like this, absolutely incredible. That's the thing that's amazing about Emerald Tree Boas is again, northern animals and southern animals look radically different, unbelievable. And then of course there's green tree python. Take a look at this one right here, Ooh, doggy. Again, Forrest works with all kinds. He's got blues, yellows, again, all kinds of crazy stuff. So I could do an entire vlog just on that. Uh, I just don't even know where to start. This thing is ridiculous. And it seems like every habitat I look in is just mind blowing. And then this one right here is actually a Kofiao Island green tree python. Of course, it's not a green tree python. It's a yellow tree. The Kofiao Islands are typically the ones that stay yellow like that. And what happens is green tree pythons, when they're born, are either born yellow or red, but then they typically turn green. With the Kofiao Islands, oftentimes they stay that unbelievable canary yellow unbelievable animal. These are actually a adult pair, proven pair of uh, black tree monitors, and they are from the island of Aru. It's, you know, funny, a lot of these are from the same islands as a lot of green the green trees, tree yeah, lo green localities trees, yeah. that we're used to. And you said these are proven then? Yeah, these are proven. Oh my God, that's yep. awesome. Yeah, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll see some eggs soon. They're an awesome species that seems to be getting rarer and rarer. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't see yeah. them around much, that's awesome. And just for you guys to know, uh, take a look at your hands. Oh, yeah. my heart, this is, this is what tree monitors are about right now. Wow. Yeah. wow. That's dedication. That's putting your body at risk there. So, wow. I tell you what, an amazing time here at Forest. If you actually enjoyed this video, here's another video I did at Forest a while back. He's an awesome guy. Here's a playlist I think you guys will really enjoy. Over here, you can smash that subscribe button. While you're at it, can you turn those post notifications on? Remember to be kind to someone today, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.